Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 45, we'll take a look at a third kind of pattern in communication between services and two services within microservices called the microservices gateway pattern. Let me show you the problem statement here. We've got a typical application and web app that has a customer information microservice, a wish list microservices, and an order placement microservice. And let's just say this is a typical order entry kind of application, all communicating through REST. The problem is we have a custom payment system in the mainframe. Now this blue system right here, the system in blue, can either be a third-party product, it could be a custom system. I'm going to use the extreme of saying it's all COBOL in the mainframe. As a matter of fact, it's still ISAM files and it communicates to the rest of the world through a protocol called OTMA. Now the question is how in the world do we communicate with this kind of system in microservices? And the answer is a third kind of microservice, and that's called a microservices gateway. And so I'm going to have a separately deployed microservice, single purpose, and it does one thing really well. It knows how to take a RESTful request and convert that to OTMA, and therefore being able to communicate with that custom payment system in the mainframe, for example, to do refunds or credits or to check store credit or to... Now, maybe look at gift cards or partial refunds, all the kind of operations. Now, usually the endpoints to get to that custom payment mainframe system, either through an API or inner service, would be through the endpoint in that gateway microservice right there. And usually these are dedicated to specific systems, but let me show you how I use gateways because I usually don't dedicate a gateway to a specific system, but rather I have a microservices gateway for each operation within that custom system. For example, let's say that there's 20 different operations within that custom payment system in the mainframe in COBOL. I can do, for example, um, get my gift card balance, uh, charge a gift card, uh, select a payment method for a credit card or a debit card. Maybe I can do a partial refund or a full refund. Let's say there's 20 different operations within my application. Now, I haven't converted that yet. It's still in the mainframe. And so now each microservices gateway is dedicated to a specific operation within that third-party product or custom system. Now the power of this is twofold. First of all, when I convert functionality from COBOL, let's say, over to Java or C Sharp, the thing is I've got a microservices gateway there that is fronting that kind of Mm, protocol transformation and contract transformation to get over to COBOL. But now as I start rewriting that COBOL, let's say over to Java in that microservices gateway, I have a data switch that now changes it from going to the mainframe to going to custom Java logic within that gateway. And now I've got a placeholder there so that that gateway in time becomes a functional service. And here's the other piece. I may have order placement. You see the order placement service. The other form of these gateways is that there is one single solitary service that in turn fronts that custom system, not many. So in other words, if order placement needed to charge a card, that goes to the custom payment system on that mainframe. But instead, order placement does an inner service call to the microservices gateway, which has all the logic to do a payment which then in turn goes to the mainframe system. Let's say the customer information system wanted to be able to display your balance on a gift card. Well, that's in the custom payment system there on the mainframe. So now the customer information system goes to a microservices gateway, which fronts that operation. And so now I can do inner service communication within my microservices ecosystem all through REST, and I have one and only one microservice that knows about that mainframe system. This is a really effective way of being able to communicate with other types of systems, other applications, whether or not you're planning on moving those to microservices as well. From an implementation standpoint, my favorite implementation of a microservices gateway happens to be Apache Camel. You see, Apache Camel is an embeddable broker, basically, or not broker, but a mediator. And so it's just camel.jar, 
and I can put that into a microservices gateway and I can start up camel, camel C equals new camel, C dot start, and I've started up camel. Now I can build a route that ends up going from rest to OTMA and it does all those transformations for me. And so it's a really effective way of being able to implement these gateways. And so now, everybody, we've actually seen three different kinds of different microservices that we can use within the ecosystem. We've seen orchestrators, we've seen aggregators, and now we've seen gateways. And these are three specialized kinds of microservices that handle this kind of adapter or kind of integration kind of approach as opposed to a functional microservice. And so for more information, you can go to Software Architecture Monday, where these videos are, and also uh, see where I'm at in the coming um, months uh, by going to upcoming events uh, on my website, developer2architect.com, as well for conferences and public training. So this has been Lesson 45, Microservices Gateway Pattern. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned next week for Lesson 46. Thanks a lot for listening.